Okay, so, um, so our expertise include, but not limited to, um, content strategy, information architecture, mobile, SEO, content management system, web technology, search, and, um, and uh, social media. So for this particular project, we, uh, implementation we did was uh, one of our clients uh, called Shaw Media. Shaw Media is uh, one of the Canada's largest uh, cable system service provider. It's kind of like the cable vision of Canada. And um, as part of their um, implementation for their Shaw Connect 2.1, which, which is uh, action driven entertainment and media portal, they also wanted uh, nine blocks for their site. And they wanted us to use the multiply, uh, WordPress, multi WordPress multi-site format um, because they had six content specific blogs for the Shop Connect portal and they uh, wanted to relaunch the ET Canada uh, and the Slice TV network blogs um, as well as a new launch for movietimetv.ca. for its subdomain, subdirectory, subdirectories format, and three of which for its subdomains format. And they wanted to use the discuss commenting system instead of using the native WordPress commenting system. And they have active directory users, they wanted to use those users in our WordPress as well. And they also had freelance editors who are not necessarily on active directory, so they also wanted those users to be in the WordPress system as well, uh, in their blogs as well. And they wanted to use S3 for static assets, uh, simple storage service for AWS, or the uh, images and videos and whatnot. And they, for the existing blogs, they wanted to do the data migration. And also, they purchased the theme for us, so we had to work with the theme that was provided for us, and wanted to add some custom widgets. And they wanted to use add this for so social media for some blogs, but not all the blogs. And of course, the ads, uh, which they use ad unit, and I'll make sure not come So to give you a little bit of screenshot of all the sites that we built, um, so that's the nine sites, and top six are the subdirectories blogs, and bottom three are the, the subdomains blog. Um, I apologize in advance that when I make this presentation, we didn't actually have the consent from the client that we can disclose their names, but um, we actually got the consent, so. Uh, you'll see the logos and the actual names are kind of blurred. So the subdirectories uh, blogs were actually pretty similar. The only difference we had to do was kind of the link color, the header color, and things like that. Whereas the subdomain directories are pretty different. So like, the themes are pretty much like almost like a different theme. So we had to actually accommodate this since it's a multi-site format. We have one code base. So we had to accommodate all these different cases in and, and our code. So the, that leads to our challenge number one. Um, our challenge number one is mixing subdirectories and subdomains. For those of you who actually implemented WordPress multi-site before that, when you actually do that, they'll actually make you choose either subdirectories format or subdomains format. But as I mentioned before, six blogs were in subdirectories and three were in subdomains. So we had to actually contact both cases. So in order to do that, we enabled the multi-site using subdirectories format and used a plugin called domain mapping to actually accommodate the subdomains. So once we actually enabled the multi-site, which I'm not going to go over this this step by step because the WordPress codex actually has a robust step by step instruction on how to set it up, and you can actually see that in that reference link. So once you set that up in your WP config, you'll have entries kind of similar to this. So the multi-site is true and. Since we actually enabled it as a subdirectory, subdomain install was false for us. And the following ones are based on how your server is configured. And the bottom one is for the domain mapping plugin. And for domain mapping plugin, I am also going to skip because you, you can't actually see from their, their project pl uh, plugin instruction. So once you set that up, there's a file called summarize.php. So you have to move that to your WP content folder and you have to set your flag on. Uh, in your WP config. So once you do that and have all the sites registered, uh, create all the sites, you'll go to the domain mapping settings, which is under network admin settings and domains, and 
and the subdomains that you need. For our cases, we needed three more subdomains. So we put that in, and for that, site ID, it actually says site ID here, but if you want to find that to map to the correct block, correct, uh, block that you have, it's actually a blog ID on the, on, the, on the table. So you can find it in your WP underscore blogs table, or if you actually use a different prefix, um, whatever prefix underscore blogs table will have your blog ID. So make sure that maps with the domain that you actually set up in here. And once you set all of them, um, you want to check all the paths are set up correct. And some, um, some paths you actually have to uh, set it, update it manually. You can do that in your network admin sites and all sites. For our self-directed ones, the paths were actually set up correctly. Whereas our subdomain ones, are, we actually have to modify it manually. So the example of that is that this was for one of the subdomain walls. So when we actually go there, make sure the domains are set up correctly. For our cases, we actually um, registered our domains as a blogs.domain name. So that's set up correctly. So path is just slash. And when we click, and when we check on the update site URL, the home URL is in a save, it automatically kind of updates the site URL and home URL for you. So that's on your settings tab. But if I, if I did that, when it automatically updates to HTTP colon slash slash domain name slash logs to create a subfolder, but that's not what we want, and so we have to just make it um, go back and change that to blogs that domain name. And once we do that um, and save, it kind of sets up the whole set, uh, path correctly. And our video century looks kind of similar to this. So we have all the character set, dog root, and server name was the, the domain name for the, the subdirectory domain. And for, uh, we actually put the the subdomains as a server alias because they're all going to the same code base, so you don't, you don't really have to do it in a different virtual host. So we put that as a server alias and we set up our application environment. Here's a, a, a good best practice tip is that you want to leverage your application environment variable when you're working with the multiple environments. So if you have like a, a QA environment, a dev environment, prod, and, and staging. Um, you can actually set the variable here, and then you can you you can actually go to WP content and have some switch statement to kind of change around your your uh, the database configuration or some, anything that's specific to your environment. You can change that there. And so, and then after that was uh, inside the directory, I, a, I normally just set the, the configuration that way. And here I actually put the mod variable inside here, but you can actually put that in your AC access file um, in your adopt group and. In fact, if you actually have a writable HTSS file and you set up your multi-site, WordPress is going to inject that for you. But I just wanted to keep it as uh, less file as possible. But, but if you want to put it in here in the virtual host, you have to make sure that you put it inside the directory um, tag. Otherwise, if you have multiple sites in your server, it's going to actually get confused with all the redirects. And I, I normally keep the error log separately as soon as that. So that's how I actually set up the multi-site for both subdirectories and subdomains. Our challenge number two is the theme. Uh, like I mentioned before, that we actually had to work with the theme that was given to us. And when they actually gave the theme, I don't think the, the, the IT department was involved and they purchased the theme. They just let the look and feel and just gave to us. So it was actually out of date. We used the WordPress version 3.3.2, but we had a lot of warnings and errors, so we had to do a lot of customization for that. And also, it wasn't for the WordPress multi-site, so we had to adjust all that. And like I showed you the screenshot before, six blogs were very similar, but three were very different. So we had to actually do a lot of adjustment for those as well. So there are a lot of code rewrites and code cleanup, fixing like warnings and arrows, type checking, null checking, undefined checking, etc. And uh, another best practice tip here is that you want to develop with the WP Debug flag on. So it's, it's actually almost a must that you use that because it's, it's going to make your life easier. It'll give you the line number of where things are breaking and, and whatnot. So using that, we did a lot of error checking and stuff, and um, we tried to remove a lot of inline scripts or defer it to the external file so that the content can load that uh, first. And we removed the, the closing page tag. Another best practice tip is that when you're in your page, pure PHP file, you want to exclude, it's actually a better idea to remove it so that you can actually exclude the, the accidental trailing white space, we can actually, which can possibly cause the voice scan of that. And so, part of the cleanup. And we create a mapping function to support multi-site. So 
So in functions PHP, we'll create a function, something like get log name by ID, which takes the log ID as a parameter. But well, a log ID is actually a global variable, so by the time it gets to functions PHP, it's available for you. So it's, it's not a, it's an optional. So based on blog ID, it will actually result to the blog name. So in our headers PHP, we will actually call that function and get the name of the blog, and we'll append it to the, the body class. Um, WordPress actually, uh, depending on what page you are on, it will output a different body class for you. But since we actually append it to all the pages, you, for the specific blog, you'll have a blog name on your body class so that you can actually develop your theme According to, according to it. And anything kind of custom, uh, so like any specific HTML that you want to include for specific blogs, we'll have an if else statement based on blog name to kind of include that. But I'll go over this a little more detail um, soon. That kind of leads to uh, challenge number three, custom development. And I, for the actual blog name, getting mapping function for the blog name, but one of the main reasons we did that was for the SEO purpose. It actually makes more sense to actually have the name of the slide, the name of the blog, like Slice TV as a class name, than just having a class like eight. So that's why we resolved it to name mainly. And um, for custom development, like you showed, I guess showed before, the screens, uh, the pages look pretty different for subdomain blogs. So the images you had to generate for those were pretty different as well. So we had to ha have different image sizes for different blogs. And um, there are custom widgets, and some custom widgets they want for all the blogs, but some they just want it for specific blogs. And different layouts, like you saw, like you've seen the screenshot before, for a lot of different blogs. So for different image sizes, in functions PHP, when you actually define the image alias, we'll actually have all the image sizes that are global, meaning that it's all in all the blogs. We'll actually define it on top, and anything that's specific to the specific blog will actually have like a escape file statement wrapped around so that we'll know which image size is for which blogs. And so in this case, so by doing this, we're not gonna generate the image sizes that's never gonna be used for certain blogs. And also, we actually handle the soft crop and harsh crop in this as well. So for example, for the archive image, um, blog number eight, which was a slice TV blog, needed the soft crop, whereas all the other blogs needed a, a harsh crop. So we'll just have that. That was the first if statement. So that's how we handle the different image sizes. And for custom widgets, one of the things I liked about the theme was that it actually created different custom themes in a different template and included in one file and injected into the function PHP. So we actually follow the same convention and um, develop it that way to be consistent. So in functions PHP, we'll include the widgets PHP, which actually has a list of all the custom widgets template. And in widgets PHP, I just included the ones that we developed. So in widgets PHP, that's where we actually specify that which widget goes to which blogs. So for the, blog, uh, so for the widgets that are for all the blogs, we'll actually put it on top. And the ones that are specific to specific blogs, we'll actually have some like a L statement to include it. So for blog eight, which was a slice TV, and blog nine, which was the ET Canada, we needed two additional widgets. So we have that, and inside the each individual widgets template, we'll have the register widgets before that we declare the class. So if you actually look at this, the admin interface, which is under appearance and widgets, for blogs from eight and nine, which we developed two additional widgets, we'll have two more, whereas all the other blogs will have two less. So by doing this, we'll ensure that editors won't accidentally put the one, the widgets that we didn't develop before that specific blog. And for the different layouts, this is one example. This is a um, index page, the home page. Um, for one blog, for um, slide number eight, which was a slide TV, I actually uh, disclose the name. They wanted a, a slider, uh, image slider, carousel slider, whereas all the other blogs didn't want it. So we actually put that as that if the blog name is blog site A, which is slice, we'll include that slider. Otherwise, we're not going to include it. So any, we'll kind of develop, all the custom development was done this way. So anything that's specific to certain blog, we'll add it. Or something that's global, we'll just not have a bell statement around it. 
So to give you the screenshot of this, um, so for blog A, we'll have this slide on top of it, and we have the listing of our of, the, of our post, and we have the, the social media widget ads and the category widget. Whereas blog number nine, which didn't have the slide uh, slider, we'll have the list of the blogs and the social media, um, and then the and ads and the category. So if you look at side by side. For that code, it's just show it kind of makes it completely different side. The challenge number four was the plugins. So we had, for, similar to the widgets, for some blogs, um, they wanted to use the plugins for all the blogs, but for some plugins were specific to certain blogs. So you had to handle those cases. And um, discuss was another thing, so you had to um, deal with it, deal with some specific special scenarios and S3. So for plugins, for the ones that are used in all the blogs, we'll actually enable it network-wise. You can do that in the network admin and plugins. But WordPress multi-site by default doesn't give you an option to control your plugins for individual blog bases. But it's like a simple setup, you just have to enable it. So to do that, you go to the network admin settings, network setting, and towards the bottom of it, there's menu settings. You just check the plugin for the enable administration menus. So once you do that, you'll see that plugin link on your individual blog admin page. And but should, actually, when you go there, you're not gonna see the ones that are uh, enabled network-wise already. So, but that doesn't mean that it's not included; it's already enabled. So you can enable it twice. And this us was um, actually we had to do a lot more than just enabling the plugin for this us because some of the the widgets that came with the thing used the uh, Common counts to like a, de to determine well, the most popular blog post, and they actually have a widget for displaying the most recent comments as well. So, and, but those are actually developed under the consumption under the assumption that that they're, we're going to be using the WordPress commenting system. But that wasn't the case for us, so we actually had to replace any place that's using WordPress comment to discuss. So to do that, and also since we have a multi-site format and we have a different domain, they have a different admins for different domains. So they, we had to create different, we, they use a different um, credentials for different stuff, discuss, uh, or discuss an admin. So to do that, um, we actually had to create another mapping function to get the, the discuss short name, which is their unique identifier. Uh, similar to the other mapping function, it will take the blog ID and then resolve to the actual uh, discuss short name. So, We'll call that in the footer where we actually include that XML library. So we'll call that discuss short name. And discuss, we actually have to use discuss category as well because um, for the, the subdomain ones, they were unique to the subdomain, but for the subdirectory ones, they only have one. But we have to actually make sure that um, which comment, we have to make sure which comment belongs to which subdirectory belongs. So to do that, we leverage the discuss category. So I created a category for individual uh, subdirectory blogs and map it there. So this uh, mapping function also actually is similar to discuss short name, yes, discuss short name. So we'll get the blog ID and resolve to the category. So once we have all that, we'll have, um, we'll assign that in the script file and actually call the external, but we actually call this libraries inside our external script file, which is script.js. And another best practice tip here is that you want to defer the exter external library include just uh, because you want to load all the contents first and don't want to wait for all the um, external libraries to be loaded. And also you want to leverage the WPNQ script and WPNQ style. And once you use WPNQ style, you have an option to actually defer your script. So if you defer that, which was the, the case for us, we defer the, the script.js to be included at the footer, the, where it's actually being called is the WP footer function. So, and all we needed the the variables to be assigned before we actually get to our external script. So, we just need to make sure that all the assignments are done before the WP footer was called. So, once we do that in the script.js, we'll call it based on the on, um, on this uh, this the short name, which is already available. We design it, and the way the category works in this case is that 
the, uh, discuss library actually knows, looks for the a variable called discuss underscore category underscore ID. So as long as it's available, it's going to use it. But if it's not, it's just going to use the default one, which is created by default. So and also we leverage the, the discuss API. Because discuss actually give you a, a code snippet in your admin page for the one, most commonly used functionalities. But um, so they have like a little snippet that you can just include in any places. But we, we actually use API because, um, for two reasons. One, we actually had to use a category, but that code snippet just provided by Discuss wouldn't let you use a category information. So we had to use that. And also, by the time the comments go to the Discuss system, they have no way to figure out if the, the blog is still published or if it's even available. So we need to make sure that we want to control all those cases. So we use the API instead of using this code snippet that's provided. So here's an example of how we used it. So we have all the information, this is a short name, API key, which is a similar um, mapping or helper function that we actually used to create it to get the correct API key based on which blog it is, and category and blog name. So this was for the actually um, showing the most recent comment widget. So we'll actually create the the URL that we're going to call API URL um, will generate it based on all the other blogs. And um, we'll actually call it. And Discuss API actually uh, comes in two different formats, JSON and XML. But we use JSON because it's lighter. Another best practice tip that you want to use JSON because it's a lot lighter than XML, so it's going to be faster. So once we get that, uh, once we get the JSON return back, the get post by link is the function that I just did, uh, what, where we did the checking for published um, content. So they'll actually check, by the, they'll get the link, and based on, if it's still published, well, it's gonna return the actual uh, post item, but if it's not available, delete it, or if it's unpublished, it's gonna return false. So as long as it's not false, we'll actually return out anything that we needed for the widget, which is, we have the author link, and the author, and the actual comments, and the link to the comment, and the created date, with a link to the post as well. So Amazon S3. Amazon S3, for those of you who haven't used it, it's the simple storage system provided by AWS. Um, so most of the times, when you actually have your, uh, when, uh, for your server, the most, the, your images or the static assets, videos or images are the ones that actually take up all your server space. So for, what some, for whatever reason, if you actually have like too much images or too many images or uh, have giant size video, it might actually stop your server and take up all the space in your server. So to prevent that, um, S3, we leverage S3 to actually handle all our static assets to be not in the server, it's in the, uh, the code of design. And um, it's AWS, so it's on the cloud server, and um, it's kind of cheap, so if you pay by the server, it's the space you actually use. So for a lot of reasons, good benefits, we use S3. And to do that, it was actually kind of simple. We used the S3 plugin called WordPress S3. You can find that in the Google code, code base or in the plugin site. Um, and for our S3, it's similar to all the other things that we had to like discuss. We actually had to differentiate the subdomains, they get different subdomains for our uh, different blogs. So we created different buckets in the, in the AWS. And uh, we also wanted to leverage the cloud front distribution URL, so our image URLs are alias are media.domainname.slash whatever the path. So um, we, to do that, we just need to pair this URL correctly in the S3, with the S3 bucket for the subdomains in AWS. And once you actually um, install your plugin, it will, and you go to the settings for Amazon S3, it's under settings, Amazon S3. Uh, you ha you'll have, initially you'll have the two top entries that you have to put in. So you have to add, enter your AWS access key ID and the secret key, which you can find it in your AWS console, but if you have different IT department, you can just ask for it. So once you put that in and click save, you have more options to leverage different options. So for our cases, we need to use the buckets. For each individual blog, we have to just make sure that, that the blog goes to the correct bucket. And, um, and also we use the cloud front so we will put the actual URL for the cloud front there, and then save, and that's pretty much it for the setting up S3. 
Our challenge number four is the third party tools. But like I mentioned before, for social media, some blogs actually want to use at this. But for some, they just they don't want to use at this and they just want to have just regular social media buttons. And at this had a, a ad unit, we had to handle different script inclusion and different variable assignment and on the as well. So for social media, for the blogs that want we use at this, we'll have something similar to the implementation we did with the discuss. So we'll have the magic, a helpful function that will actually get the add this pub ID, which is a unique identifier for the for the add this. And then we'll get the, the public ID and we'll assign that in a script and in our external script file, in the script JS, we'll actually have the library including here. And then here we just wanted to make sure that it's only included for the blogs that are using add this. So we'll have this um, the bell statement to see if the body class includes whatever site name will include it, otherwise not going to include it. <coughs> and in the the places where we actually use this, for for our homepage we actually use on um, the social media buttons. So we'll have based on which blog name it is for the ones that use that this. The top three is actually the, the get option. <coughs> That variable is for the, the theme. Those theme actually give you an option to turn on and off the individual media buttons, social media buttons. So that was for that. And so for anything, if the, they wanted to show the Twitter button, we'll actually just include whatever was in there. And you can actually find this um, documentation on the Anthos, which I actually provided here, and the uh, support.anthos.com. But they pretty much have all the buttons that possibly think of and they actually also give you the option to create your custom buttons as well. So I think this button was actually the, the button with the bubble on top of it. So we'll have do this for the same page whereas the ones that didn't use that this will have the same layout so they have the get options but we didn't use that this so we don't have that whole add this uh, wrap down, wrappers around it so we'll just include the actual button. And open wrap wasn't a requirement for us if we use the iframe one. And add unit. Um, so for add unit, they did, we have to include a different scripts and just assign different variables based on which block they're on. And another thing was that we had multiple ads in different places. So, but they want all those ads to match. So like for example, like like one of those example was like they have a full screen ad and they want all the other ads to match that so that the whole thing is for that ad. So in order to do that, we have to generate a random number and then assign the same random number for the session. So we create that actually in the headers file. Uh, we create a global a variable called add random, and add random, we'll, we assign it there. And any places we actually include the ads, just in different files as well, we'll, we'll be able to leverage that variable. So one of the example we did for, was for the wallpaper ad, is that we'll actually have a wrapper div around the, the ad um, switch statement because so that we can actually control the, the CSS and the styling around it. And inside that, we'll have that similar way we develop it, all the other customization that if the blog name is a certain thing, we'll include different scripts. And um, some directory blogs actually needed to have more variables that we have to assign, so that was just for that. And for Omniture, it's kind of similar in a way, but different, they actually have different team for their Omniture for individual blogs. So they, for some Omniture code, we can just include one script, whereas some other blogs, we actually have to include the S code script and assign the variables by ourselves. So it's the, we'll have the, if the blog name is whatever, that um, so the first one is the one that just gave the, blog, uh, the script that handles everything. So that's, so if the blog name is that, we'll include that script, but if, it's another uh, variable. If it's another blog that we needed to handle everything, we'll include the S code script and have like assigned variables based on any value that we need to pass on. And outside of all this, if, we, if that else statement, we'll have the typical script and no script include for the Omniture that since it's used for all the Omniture code anyway, uh, for all, all the Omniture code. Okay, so the other stuff is our environment was um, on EC2 on Ubuntu, and we use RDS for our uh, database, and we use WordPress version 3.3.2, and we use Tim City for continuous integration, and uh, we had Akamai and APC, and also had WP Super Cache for caching layer, 
and the plugins, plugins we use, this is the one plugins that we use for all the logs for us um, WP domain mapping, S3 cloud server, Active Directory, user editor roles, which actually give you an option to change um, editors' roles based, and you can assign different groups as well, and the use super cache and discuss comment. And I actually didn't use add this plugin because we only need it for certain logs, and they actually provide more functionality than what we needed, and it's pretty simple to implement, so I didn't use the plugin for that. So to recap, so we Enable the multi-site with subdirectory format and use domain mapping to map the subdomains. And we create a lot of helper and mapping functions to do custom development. There are a lot of switch and impel statement for the customized uh, thingy and, uh, and uh, custom development. And to recap the best practice, you want to leverage the application environment variable if you have multiple environments set up. And you want to develop with a WP debug flag on. And Remove the closing PHP tag for pure PHP files so you can actually avoid um, adding an external white, uh, trailing white space. And you want to defer the library, uh, external libraries so that your content can load first. And um, leverage the WP and Q script and WP and Q style so that it'll actually, WordPress will actually group the, the inclusion for you so it'll be um, better for the uh, SEO. And use JSON over XML because it's a lot lighter if you have a choice. So you can find my contact information here and then you can find the presentation in the URL. But keep in mind that I actually use impress.js for this presentation. So it only works for the latest Firefox, Chrome, or Safari, anything that supports CSS3 and 3D. And here's the company website. And I actually included the, the plugin links here, but um, for the ones that, for the, those of you who actually are interested in finding it. Yeah, so I'll keep it, keep it here so that you can actually see it after this presentation. Um, so that's it. Any questions? We actually didn't have any issues when we moved to local development, but um, when we actually <laughs> moved the development to production, we had a lot of issues just because um, they didn't actually tell, tell us that what was on the server. So, and then some of the aliases, uh, it was, this instruction wasn't followed correctly, but we didn't really have any uh, issues with it. Um, as long as you put it in your, I think, um, no, it actually didn't matter because our it, uh, we actually put it into dub 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 slash blogs, so and um, that, that didn't give us any problems. Any other questions? Yeah. It's kind of hard to yeah. see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. over there. What was the budget for this? One fifty, two hundred, two fifty. Ooh, that's. Uh, I actually have to get back to you on that. I wasn't involved in the actual budget, but this was actually like a month project.
So what it does is that for, they actually give you that you know, highlight line. If you actually want your content to go directly to that big directory, you have to do another plugin. But if you don't do that, it'll actually create a temporary folder. So it install and, and puts all the assets there and then moves it from there. Yeah, but they actually delete those um, temporary uh, temporary assets if the, they are moved to that big directory. Uh, moved to S3. Yeah. No, we actually, the, this WordPress doesn't actually do that. If you want to share it, you probably have to do manual uh, development for it. But our purpose was that we had different system for, for blogs. And so and then the, the content wasn't shared. Yeah? Uh, do you think if, if you had a to have a multi-site was that they had a really small IT team for the, all the contents they had to handle. So they had like, like five people for all these different blogs. So they wanted the, the less code to handle was better for them. So having one code base for nine blogs was actually good for them. So it depends on like if you can handle more than that. And if you want to have a separate code base, you might want to do that. But um, it really depends on how you want to structure it and how, how much of resource you have. Yeah. 